just going back on this whole podcast one thing just touching on it again i know it's a bit old news just touching on it again you know what's really surprised me about this thing that i thought was really interesting and kind of spoke to a lot of what's been happening and a lot of maybe the egos that we see on these podcasts and the, the just unwilling to, to listen to the fans and all this sort of stuff i think a lot of this has to do with money i really really do now that we know that cast media was essentially overpaying their talent it makes a lot of sense why a lot of these guys felt like they didn't answer to nobody because essentially to them the people in the industry were the ones who were dictating their worth and they assumed or they basically put a, a figure next to them um, in terms of the ad spend which kind of was to them a validation on how good or successful they were as, as a comedian and it does explain a little bit for me why the dip in quality was so stark like a lot of these pods all started off well and I, I can't think of one podcast even Whitney Cummings is one I can't think of one comedy podcast that didn't start off well they all started off amazing came out the blocks flying you're like oh my god i can't believe this yeah 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 i've got a new pod these comedians are funny oh my god yeah 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 and then as soon as the money hit and the sponsors start coming in the draft kings you start having liquid death on the table all this fucking shit boom it all goes downhill it was all like most of them most of them the only one i can think of that didn't have that drastic downhill kind of crash was maybe joe joe felt like a little bit more of a gradual kind of um descent into shitness it's still a bit decent but his one felt more gradual like it happened over a number of years the other guys it felt like it happened like sharply as soon as they got deals with cast media or whatever it may be at the time it just fell off, fell off a cliff and and then you know when you think about how the fans reacted to it falling off a cliff and you know talking to them like for instance like the, the your mom's house podcast every time you go on the reddit people are complaining about the ads People complain about Two Bears, One Cave and Burt Crash always interrupting and saying the same stories all over again and Christina P being annoying and blah, 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 blah. The, they don't listen to anything. If anything, Tom Segura will get on camera and just start scolding his fans for being poor and broke and not getting it. They don't, they don't buy it. Why? Because they're getting so much fucking money that it essentially insulates and, you know, and makes them silence out what you have to say because in a way I understand it. In a way, I kind of get it because in their heads, they're thinking, hey, I'm getting paid all this money. If I'm getting paid all this money, I can't suck. It's impossible. How can I suck if I'm getting all this money? It's a sort of confidence that Brendan had at the beginning when it was like, you remember that rant about homeless cats? Like, you guys don't, you don't, you couldn't fathom what it's like to put together a podcast, a comedy set, and blah, 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 blah. Because he was getting employed by E, Showtime, he had stuff on TMZ. He was doing ridiculousness with fucking, what's his name? Um, with Rob Deirdre and shit. The podcast is booming. All the appearances on Rogan. Think how he's going to see it from Brendan Schaub's eyes. Why should he listen to some spotty fucking Redditor or some random black guy on stream? Why would you listen to me? It doesn't make any sense. But then that also, I think, alienated a part of the fan base. So if anything, the money that these guys made was life changing. It allowed them to finally pursue comedy with a carefree. Because I think there is a part of me that thinks a lot of these guys need this level of money to kind of approach comedy in a more of a carefree way to maybe get better comedy. It hasn't helped really because what's in in my eyes, right? This is a very idealistic way to look at artistry, right? I feel like if you're an artist, you should always use your money to just make your art better, right? So you take the money that you make and you just pour it back into what you do. Like I sometimes take whatever you guys send here. I'm buying fucking, you know, lighting things. I'm buying better, better camera. Well, not cameras. I haven't, I haven't upgraded my camera yet, but a better microphone. I'm trying to buy headphones. Most of them are fucking shit. But you try and invest back into what you're doing, whatever way you are, you want to do, right? But I feel like sometimes with these comedians, what they should have done is that they should have used the the kind of the buffer that the podcast money gave them. Like if you're making like on this thing they say Whitney Cummings who's I think one of the worst podcasts in the whole comedy scene right it's fucking garbage right and she's a very hard person to even kind of like as a human being but she she says in this article that she's owed at least three hundred and fifty thousand dollars if that's me and I'm Whitney and she already comes from money as well let's think about it let's put that into perspective but if I'm Whitney and, I'm, and I don't know about that that about her I'm using that buffer that bit of cup that bit of like room that bit of runway to allow me to take more chances on my comedy 
because I know I'm not relying on doing a gig at the fucking ha ha in order to fucking put money on my in my bank account in order to pay my rent or to put food on the table. I know that my podcast is allowing me to kind of take chances on my flipping um on my comedy that's what i would do and i'll take more chances whether it means you know different subject matters whether it means going on tour to different places to get more inspiration whether it means doing different tours whether it means doing a tour just for the sake of it just to kind of touch the fans whatever just try something fresh and new but they don't if anything the podcasting made them more lazy who would have thought that the podcast money and the buffer that it gave them made them lazier they doubled down on making more lit podcasts which to add to add more money which then stretched them thin which then weren't that great and then they spent less time actually on flipping um they spend less time on actual stage doing comedy bits and shit they spend less time going on the road or getting up on stage it's weird isn't it i honestly thought they would use that money use that, that opportunity to kind of be a little bit more you know take a few more chances and shit but if anything no it's just the same old shit it all went to fucking shit so maybe the 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 person to really blame for the decline of podcasting isn't the pandemic isn't people returning back to work it might be fucking cast media cast media may have fucked up the whole thing because if you believe what callan said they they don't do any research comedians about finding out what good po podcast networks to join or who's good for ads they just talk to each other in the parking lot of these clubs and then they all found out oh this cast media place was was paying this amount so they all got giddy eyed oh my god how much they're paying you and they all went there but they didn't know cast media was overpaying them to get them on board in the fear in the thinking that colin thompson guy that he went to sell the company he always went to sell it he was never going to stay there for the long term he always went to front load get all these big names on his flipping network advertising thing he's got and then sell it on or go public with all those guys on board to add value to what he's already got so they always overpaid they never gave them the fucking industry standard or what they were actually worth they overpaid them these podcasters got delusions of grandeur and thought that rate was actually what they were owed or what they deserved because of how big they are and then boom the fucking podcast bubble does burst because they're all doubling down like like what brendan did brendan just saw heard the number what he heard like 300 or 250 whatever it was and just thought hold on if i do command copy on this podcast and do command v command v and do four others and get the same ad rates for the other four i'm a millionaire in, in a year and he did it and that's what he did and here we are so i think we have to blame cast media for the decline of podcasting we have to blame cast media <laughs> it's crazy to say this but i think it's true um